Ah, there we go. What's up guys? I'm back in the garage and it's time for the next upgrade on the front end of this truck. Uh, keeping with the theme of the last video, this is going to be a cost-effective upgrade that really beefs up the independent front suspension of the Tacoma. We are going to be installing these. These are Total Chaos Spindle Gussets. They are 50 bucks, not including shipping, so really cheap. And what they do is they strengthen the factory spindle right here, which is prone to bending if abused sufficiently off-road. To install these, what we're going to do is we're going to take the whole spindle assembly out of here, we're going to clean everything up and we're going to weld these things on. And you guys know I love cutting and welding. So I'm excited. Uh, let's get to it. Let's get this thing out of here. I'm going to show you guys all the steps required to install these things. Let's go. All right. Like I just mentioned, we're going to be taking the entire spindle assemblies out of the truck to weld on the bench. And the purpose of that is so uh, that we can get all of our weld surfaces really clean. We can wire wheel everything very easily and nothing's gonna block us from cleaning the surfaces. But even more importantly is so that we can weld flat. Um, you can install spindle gussets while the spindles are still on the truck. Uh, the problem is you need to weld uphill on both the front and back side. If you're a good welder, you can do that, no problem, but there's definitely more potential to mess it up and there's a little more technique required. But the even bigger pain is that to weld the back side, there's just not a lot of space to do it and there's a lot of complaints. Uh, by people on forums after they've tried it saying just take them off the truck it's definitely worth the effort so we're going to do that the proper way to install the spindle gussets like the by the book is to actually press the ball joints out um the upper and lower ball joints we would you should press them out unfortunately i don't have the tools to be able to do that so we're going to leave them in and we're going to shield them and i'll show you how i do that and i think that's going to be just fine but obviously to get these spindles out of here we got to disconnect everything that <laughs> prevents us from doing so uh, we got to take spacers off, we got to take brakes off, got to take tie rods off, which I already have done because I just installed those poly bushings in my steering rack and had, didn't reconnect them after that. So I'm done with that. And then we got to push the CV axle out the backside, take you know, our brake lines off and, and all that. And then we're going to disconnect the spindle at the upper and lower ball joint studs. And we'll see if we can get them off of there. Um, I'm hoping it goes pretty smoothly, but I'll film the process either way. Let's get to it, guys. Uh, I'm really psyched to start this one. All right, we'll take off the brake line with that one 12 millimeter bolt. This whole bracket should come right off. Oh, I <laughs> broke it. Oh well, it's off. Then we're going to just bend this bracket that's holding the ABS wire just to get it out of there. Perfect. The caliper's held in here by these two. Where's the other one? These two bolts. They are quite dirty. Yeah, I'm gonna brush those and then get a breaker bar on them. Ooh, wow, that's in there. There, okay, that one's gone. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, just for convenience, I have the caliper off, resting on the brake. Um, obviously, I need it out of the way, so I'm gonna take a couple of zip ties. I only have small ones right now, unfortunately. And I'm going to run them through one of the spring coils and then through one of the bolt holes on the caliper itself. And I'm just gonna zip it to the coil. And this is to make sure that that brake line doesn't get stretched. Now we can get the disc off with a few love taps, hopefully. There she goes. Get off of there. Now we're gonna try to get this dust cap off so we can get at the CV axle nut. We're gonna try to do it without damage. The key is to use a very fine screwdriver, flathead screwdriver to start, or as, as thin a tip as you can get, and then just kind of work your way around, and then you can move to a more blunt, larger flathead screwdriver.
Now I can just pry it, I think. Now we'll remove the cotter pin here. Okay. Remove this retaining nut. And then we're gonna get an impact on this guy. Because if I try to use a breaker bar, it's gonna do that. All right, now for what I hope is the last tricky job, is we're gonna separate the spindle from the upper control arm. And to do that, we're first gonna take this cotter pin out. There we go. And then we will take the castle nut off with a 27 millimeter socket. We're gonna thread this back on just a little bit because the spindle is still bonded to the upper control arm. And how to separate it completely is we're going to take a sledge, hand sledge, right here, and we're just gonna whack that face right there, and it should just fall right out. Boom. Just like that, guys. Easy. All right, we're almost there. I'm just going to disconnect the entire spindle assembly at the lower ball joint and uh, take the ABS sensor off and then we can pull this thing out of here. There we go. I lied guys, it's gonna be just a little easier if I take this uh, spindle assembly off of the lower ball joint assembly, so I'm gonna quickly do that. There we go, I'm very carefully Take that CV axle out of there so it doesn't fall. Boom! There you go. Spindle and hub assembly. Right there. I've removed the driver and passenger side spindle and hub assembly. And the next step is to get them cleaned up and ready to be welded on. And to do that, I'm gonna use the wire wheel. But before I use the wire wheel, I absolutely wanna mask off all the areas where I don't want the crud, the rust, the dirt, the paint, the grease getting into. And that includes the hub region, uh, the ABS sensor holes, and uh, the ball joints, maybe a couple other little spots too. But I'm just gonna use some blue painter's tape to mask off everything that I don't want to get messed up. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and then let's clean this things up. Got these spindles pretty nicely cleaned up at this point. They're not perfect, and I'll probably do a little more before I, you know, paint them and get them ready to go back on the truck. But for welding, I think we're just about set. Um, the spindles fit in, or the spindle gussets fit in here kind of like this, and they tuck up right against this face. As you can see, uh, there's a little bit of a high spot right here on the gussets. I might take just a little bit off this protrusion. Not much though. Um, they fit pretty well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take a little bit off because it's there's a little bit of a gap here and I want it to sit in just a little further and hug this entire contour of the spindle. But we're getting close guys. This is exciting. Uh, I'm going to take this little bit off, clean this face up, and then we'll get welding. Just a little bit of work with a flap wheel and now this thing fits a lot better. There's no more gap up here, uh, follows the contour really nicely, and uh, I'm happy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack this thing on here, 
uh, just a couple tacks to hold it in place and then I'm gonna talk you through the method I'm gonna use to weld the rest of it because there's just a little bit of a trick to it but first things first let's tack it on because I'm leaving the upper ball joint in it's important to not let any sparks from the welding process burn through the rubber boots or else you'll need to replace the ball joints anyway and you wasted your time so I've got some wet paper towels just draped around the ball joint boot not enough to drip but enough so that if anything lands on them, uh, they're not going to burn through. Okay, now that I've got these both tacked up, I want to talk just a little bit about the method I'm going to use to finish weld these. And uh, there's just a few tricks that you need to know to get a good end result on these gusset installations. Uh, first thing to mention is that you've got seriously dissimilar metal thicknesses here. You've got an eighth inch gusset. I mean, it's, it's an eighth inch thick, and then the spindle's like an inch thick, like in both <laughs> directions. Um, that's, a, that's a lot of steel here, and it's much, much thinner on the gusset itself. That means you can't just set your machine up, or I'm not just going to set my sh machine up to weld eighth inch steel because I won't get good penetration on the spindle. I'm going to set it up just a little hotter than eighth inch, and uh, I'm gonna, my favorite torch pattern is to just use sort of a little circular pattern. And I'm gonna hang out with each circle, I'm gonna hang out longer on the spindle and sort of dip into the gusset so that I don't burn through it with my hotter than eighth inch machine setting. So that's the first trick. Um, second thing to keep in mind is that while it's very unlikely you're gonna warp this thing, I mean, there's a lot of steel here, uh, you'd need a ton of heat to warp this spindle. Um, you probably could if you just weld this thing straight up and don't stop at all and just get it super hot. You might warp the spindle and you don't want to do that because then you got to trash the whole thing. So Total Chaos recommends welding in two to three inch sections. So you weld like two inches here, stop, move over to the other one so that this one cools a little bit and you just kind of switch back and forth so that the temperature never gets too extreme. Uh, one of my Instagram welding friends, <laughs> who is a fantastic welder, I'll link his account in the description, mentioned that you shouldn't let the spindle completely cool, though. You want to keep a little bit of heat in it as you go back and forth. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to weld two-inch sections, move back and forth, keep going, make sure the thing stays up to temp just a little bit. With all that in mind, I'm going to lay these flat, and uh, let's weld them. Well guys, I think these turned out pretty nicely. Uh, just took it slow, took it in sections as I mentioned, and um, ran it a little hotter than eighth inch, and I think it worked just fine with a little bit of torch manipulation, but I'm very happy with how they look. This would have been a total nightmare to do it on the truck, so definitely remove the spindle assemblies to do this job <laughs> or else you're gonna have a really hard time anyway I'm going to brush up these welds now that they're cool and uh, then we're gonna paint these things and get them back on spindle assemblies are all cleaned up I've hung them up down here in my friend's basement unfortunately these uh, this is the only indoor painting space I have right now uh, that has a decent painting temperature but we're gonna make it work for paint I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum products. If you guys watch my videos, uh, you know I really like Rust-Oleum products. For a primer, we're going to be using just traditional Rust-Oleum filler primer. This stuff is awesome. Um, it lays on really easily, cures really fast. You can top coat it in just a couple minutes. I really love it. Um, and then for a top coat, we're going to use just flat protective enamel. It's the same stuff I put on my rear bumper. And uh, this stuff actually cures really hard. If you give it a full 48 hours or even a little more, um, you're going to get a really nice, hard, durable top coat. And it's super easy to prep for, and you really can't get it wrong. So anyway, let's get painting, guys. I think these things are going to turn out really nicely.
All right, guys. Now comes the fun part. We get to bolt these things back up. It's not too bad. The sequence is pretty easy. I'll show you how I do it. And I will give you torque specs for all the fasteners, all the related bolts and nuts, because uh, I think that's pretty useful to all have in one video. Not too hard to find on Google, but, you know, they're all here. It's pretty slick, I'd say. But let's get going. I cannot wait to see these things on there. Let's do it. The very first thing we're going to do is thread the needle, get this CV uh, splined end through the hub, and then we are going to set the spindle assembly on the lower ball joint bracket and run the four bolts in that uh, fasten it to that bracket. See if I can get this threaded without too much issue. Oh yeah. Just work the CV a little. Perfect. Get these bolts run in. And then you probably noticed I have a floor jack here, and that is because I want to lift the lower control arm just enough so that we can get the stud of the upper ball joint through the upper control arm. It's pretty close. Now we're just going to muscle the upper control arm down a little bit, get your castle nut ready, thread it on there. It doesn't need to be super tight yet, just enough so that the whole assembly is together. And then we can let the floor jack down, and we're at least connected. Now, while I have nice access to it, I'm going to reinstall the ABS sensor here. And while I told you guys I'd be torquing everything, uh, unfortunately, this is the one thing I cannot torque correctly. I think the torque spec is 71 inch-pounds, and I do not have a torque wrench that goes down that low. So, I will just be snugging this up. I've broken one of these in the past. It's easy to do, so do not over torque these little baby bolts here. Just so it's tight. We want to seal, but we don't want to break it. Alright, feels pretty good to me. It's time to reconnect the steering by reinstalling the outer tie rod end into the lower ball joint, bracket, knuckle, whatever you want to call it. But I'm actually going to be replacing the outer tie rod ends right now just uh, to have new ones in here and have these as backups. So I'm going to measure this distance right here to um, get a rough setting of how far it's threaded into the inner tie rod end and get a rough steering toe setup. It should be good enough to get this thing to a shop to get it aligned. It'll need to be aligned immediately um, come springtime, but that's fine. So let's get let's measure this, get it out of here and get shiny new parts on the truck. Get that, thread the castle nut on, my camera died but you can see I got a nice shiny new cotter pin in the tie rod end as well. Now we're going to get the brake components back on here, but first I'm just going to get my axle nut, just sort of start it on here, and with the Makita, just gonna zip it down a little bit. So that's not torqued, but it's on there enough to make sure that the CV axle is seated and everything is ready for final torque. Now we're going to get the disc back on here. Now we're going to free our caliper from where we hung it on the coil. Get it over the disc. And then we'll take our caliper bolts and thread them in. The caliper bolts are both 17 millimeter and they have a torque of 90 pound-feet. There we go. Now it is time to torque the axle nut. And there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, it's tricky because if you have the front end of the truck in the air like I do, if you just try to torque it like this, um, you're just going to rotate the hub and you're not going to get any torque on it at all. So you can either have someone hold on the brakes if uh, you know, you've got your brakes on and you have a partner. I do not have a partner right now, so I'm going to use a different method. I'm going to take a lug nut, an open-ended lug nut that I don't care about, and I'm going to thread it on backwards so that the flat face of the nut is against the disc. And you want to make sure the disc is firmly seated against the hub 
mounting face. And there's a couple of reasons I'm doing it this way with the lug nut. One of them is that I protect the threads on the stud so that I don't mess them up when I inevitably put a jack stand under here so that it resists the rotation. And another one, another reason is because that larger diameter uh, will prevent or resist any sort of bending force I create by applying torque to this. So let's see if we can get it torqued this way. Ah, there we go. It's all torqued. Now I can put this sheet metal retainer back on here, get a new cotter pin through, and we can bend it. Now we will take our dust cap, get it lined up and give it a little tappy. Money. The upper ball joint castle nut should be torqued to 80 pound feet. There we go. Yep. Then we'll install a nice shiny new cotter pin. Now, if you guys remember, I was stupid and loosened the castle nut on the lower ball joint, which I didn't have to do, but now I have to retorque it, and it is torqued at 103 pound feet. We go. The four bolts holding the lower ball joint bracket to the knuckle slash spindle are all torqued at 59 pound feet and they take a 14 millimeter socket. We're almost there. We just got to refasten the brake line and the ABS sensor wire. Um, I conveniently broke the bolt on the other side that actually fastens both these junk little sheet metal brackets to the spindle. So I'm showing you on the driver's side, and I'll deal with the <laughs> passenger side later. But there's just a couple bolts that bolt these sheet metal pieces together and then to the spindle. They both take a 12 millimeter socket. Um, I'm, torque specs I don't really care about because they're tiny, and I'm just going to get them snug. And then the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reinstall my spacers. And you guys might not even have to do this if you don't run spacers. Install our spacer. Use the same jack stand lug nut trick to torque the spacer on here. I'm just going to 100 pound feet. That's what I always go to. Seems to work. Boom! We're done, guys. All right, guys, the freshly gusseted spindles are back in the truck and the entire front end of the truck is back together. I'm really happy with how these turned out and I highly recommend doing this mod if you have any welding experience because it's a really fun welding job and it's not too bad, not too difficult. You need a little bit of torch trickery, but nothing extreme and I think a lot of people could pull this off. And it's really cheap too, 50 bucks for these gussets from Total Chaos and they add a ton of strength. People have been known to beat on these gusseted spindles pretty hard and they hold up. So I'm excited to test them out. And I'm also happy to say that this concludes all the front end work I'm gonna do on this truck this winter. My goal for all these little front end revamp projects was to get the most bang for my buck, spend very little money and get as much added performance as I could. And I'm proud to say, I think I've done that. I have added polyurethane steering rack bushings. Not a big job, but actually adds a, a whole lot of performance and a lot of uh, tightness in the steering. And that's $30. I have added the spindle gussets, uh, 50 bucks. I've added the taco tabs, $100. And I've reinforced the alignment tabs for 10 bucks. You can get so much added performance for less than $200 by just tackling these small projects. So I'm excited to test them all out come springtime. I'm moving on and going to tackle some other projects on the truck and I'm happy to say that I'm getting my tube bender fired up in the very near term. So if you're psyched to see that and see me play around with it and figure it out and build some cool stuff, make sure to subscribe. And if this video helped you out or you enjoyed watching, um, please throw me a like. I really appreciate any sort of support. It really helps me out and uh, motivates me to keep making these videos. And if you have any questions about this job, the truck, future mods, anything at all, 
please feel free to comment. I'm happy to chat with anybody. I'm excited to get some more projects going, uh, but for now, I'm out of here. See you guys later.